Good morning, traders. This is Bob Hammercorn, Jeff Friedman, Kevin Craney, coming to you from RJO Futures here in Chicago. Uh, today to discuss the FOMC uh, two-day meeting that comes out tomorrow on their decision, as well as Friday morning we have the uh, quarter three GDP numbers. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about how that's going to affect the stock market, the bonds, the currencies, the precious metals. Uh, definitely an interesting week uh, on top of an election coming up in two weeks. So you know, we'll see how this thing plays out here. Jeff, what are you looking at for uh, the stocks? Uh, um, well, uh, you know, the stock market has been uh, doing a correction. We were near the highs of the year around looking at the S&P December future contract. We were around 1460 only three, four days ago. We're in the, you know, in the middle of earnings. We got some bad earnings uh, with some big names, and we pulled back down, you know, obviously Google being one, uh, DuPont today being, you know, another big name. But have said that, we, we were correcting, and we went lower than a two-week low. So we're in a big consolidation. How will it affect uh, GDP and the, uh, the Federal Reserve announcement uh, uh, tomorrow? I think that really it will have no bearing at all. I think that we're in a trading pattern, okay, we're making lower lows of a correction in a bull market. Why do I say a bull market? I'm talking about 15% better for the year in the stock index futures across the board if you're looking at the NASDAQ or the Dow or the S&P. So have said all that, this is nothing more than a correction. I think that the election will probably be more important than GDP or the FOMC. Remember, last meeting on the FOMC, we got uh, an open-ended commitment from uh, the Federal Reserve, which means they can, con can continue. And if you get weakness in any sector, including uh, GDP, which is a looking back kind of indicator after the fact, if you will, then uh, they'll just extend it. I think that they're going to try to make the markets uh, feel comfortable, and I would use the warm and fuzzy kind of attitude, uh, but I don't think any significant announcement will come from tomorrow, uh, FOMC. I agree with you on that. Uh, with what, you know, with, with the Fed, I don't think anything significant is going to come out of this Fed meeting at all uh, tomorrow. I mean, I you think, that, like Jeff's touched on the warm and fuzzy, I mean, we got an election in two weeks, so... I don't think they want to politicize uh, the Fed at this point going into the election. After the election, I think that's when you'll see some act, you know, activity by the Fed. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. You know, Kevin, what are your thoughts on the bond market? Uh, I think we're going to continue to stay in this trading range that we've been in here yeah. in the bond market. And certainly, when your th I echo your thoughts on the FOMC meeting. Uh, this meeting really is not going to carry a lot of content. I think we're going to get some assessment of the economy and where things are at. But really, you have to look no further than earnings that are coming out now, yeah. as well as uh, macroeconomic data. The economy is flat on its back. And more importantly than the Q3 earnings that are coming out, the numbers itself, it's important to listen to what executives are saying. And executives are telling you they're pulling back. There's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. There's a lot of nervousness going into this election. How are things going to look post-election? A lot of consolidation we see really in every market across the board. And I don't think that bonds are any different. I think you're going to continue to see that, albeit there is, if there is in my opinion, an implied floor underneath bonds because the Fed is going to be there. They're going to be there. They're going to be able to step in and they're going to be able to purchase. Uh, and they're going to have those programs running from an open-ended standpoint. So that's something important to consider as we watch the ranges play out. You know what we got to think about, too, when you talk about the bonds is at the end of the year, twist does expire. I mean, I you know, see how they how what if there's any language. I think I don't think it'll. You think there'll be any language tomorrow on twist? I don't. On the extension. I think it's a little premature for that. I yeah. think we have to wait and see how the election plays out, and I yeah. think we have to really kind of wait and see what the fourth quarter is shaping up to be. Sure, We're sure. early on right now. Uh, generally, the fourth quarter is a big quarter with the holiday season, so we need to get a feel for what consumers are looking at for the holiday season and, and see how things play out going into the new year. You know, I get asked a lot because I do. Uh, you do do a lot in the precious metals. Um, what's going to happen here with the election and with gold and silver? It's coming up a lot now. Um, I think you got a couple things going on. I think gold and silver right now, uh, while they still are, uh, you know, uh, pretty high, up pretty good here. Silver above thirty, gold above seventeen hundred. Do expect some pullbacks coming here in the precious metals because you got a couple things going on right now. You got the Fed, Bernanke's term expires in 2014. If Obama does not get elected, 
um, you're probably going to see uh, Romney would appoint a more hawkish Fed chairman, uh, where you would see probably a stronger dollar, weaker stocks, which would then mean a little weaker on the commodity side. But we'll see. We could talk about that maybe a little later. Um, we should talk about that a yeah, little later. Absolutely. Um, Looking at the the bond market, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that they haven't really pulled the trigger on their announcement from six weeks ago. Meaning they made the commitment that they're going to do about 40 billion a month in new bond buying, but I think that their balance sheet is kind of uh, at probably a five or six month low. Meaning that they haven't actually pulled the trigger. They say, "Hey, our." Guns are loaded. We're ready to go, but they haven't done it. So uh, again, I'm agreeing with you. I think we're in a trading affair, but that would uh, say that there is a floor. If we if if yields got a little higher up where they didn't want them to be, then they would start pulling the trigger. Um, they might not pull the trigger for the election. The election, in my opinion, is really important. We should probably have a roundtable about that. Um, I'm. Just like last time, and I think we agreed last time, I think that we should use these two reports, the announcement from the FOMC and uh, maybe the actual release of the report of GDP, uh, as uh, to me, if you're bullish or you're playing the trading ranges in whatever market, uh, last time it worked out real well. Obviously, uh, the FOMC meeting with the open-ended surprised everybody and we got a little higher than we wanted and that was the top end and uh, we went to a resistance area and it didn't have enough momentum to go higher. In this particular case, if we go down to the lower end in the stock index futures, the, the guys that want to be long in a bull market up 15%, you're buying a dip, you find a support level that works for you. One thing that pops in my brain is the December S&P, maybe 1395 would be an area to at least watch when the report comes out and see if we get there. You might have to hold your breath 30 seconds. It might be two hours, but somewhere if if the market is sliding, you, you pick a place to buy. And if it's rallying significantly, you try to fade it on a resistance area of some point. So that's kind of how I'm going to look at the uh, stock index futures. And you guys are both right. Uh there is probably a bottom here in the stock market right now. Uh, I'm touching on the 1395 level. When you have a loose monetary policy with what the Fed's doing, I mean, how I don't see how the stock's the weakness creeps into this market right now. Just with the Fed being, uh, you know, the, the, the silent hand here. I don't see it either, and I think you have to look at the exuberance that's coming in from this open-ended bond buying program, and, and you touched on it. While they haven't pulled the trigger yet, and I think that's something that's important to watch, because when they do pull the trigger, in my opinion, that's when you're going to see, more than likely going to see more weakness from the macroeconomic side. We haven't really seen a lot of weakness since that announcement, but we haven't seen a lot of momentum higher. It continues to be a mixed bag of data from the regional manufacturing indices that we see to the service sector indices. Consumer sk spending continues to be strong, albeit if you looked at the last number and you take out the Apple sales, really it was pretty flat. So we continue to see this mixed bag and it doesn't lead to any purchases yet. But it is something to watch because if it does happen, I think it's, it's on the heels of weaker macroeconomic data and more concerns about potentially falling back into the recession. I do think that stocks are, uh, anytime they fall, you're going to continue to see a buying opportunity. Sure. Um, it's just where we're at right now, and, and uh, you, you have the Fed in there trying to prop up asset prices. Yeah, but the Fed there, I mean, they're, they're controlling the stock market right now. It's not, uh, I don't see it as being... Uh, Mr. Main Street trade the stock market right now. I, I look at it being the Fed right now that, that is keeping the you know the market up as high as it is. You know we got GDP two Friday. Uh, GDP has been pretty weak, all below two percent for the last. You know, got uh, when was the last time we had above two percent reading? Was it maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago? Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's uh, we got it coming out. They're expecting around one point nine, one point seven ish territory. So that'd be interesting to see. I mean, uh, do you? See, I mean, GDP. Do you I, see, I, I earnings I have been kind of weak. You see a. a but two above two or, or no, and if it's above two, it'd be two point one, two point two, which is probably revise it. Yeah, I mean, look at last uh, last time they announced where were we one point three, so it is a step up at one point nine. Um, I don't think you know. I look at GDP; it's kind of looking after the fact. Uh, it comes in and, and is telling everybody what they already know, including the Fed. That's why they're doing QE3. 
Uh, I don't think that they really anticipate a robust uh, GDP. Uh, if it did, what would that do? Let's say we got 3.0, 3.9, just out of control. That just means that the Fed's program, QE3, would just last less time. Yeah. Okay? And if we get a, a 1.3, then it would last a little longer time. The most important thing is the cutoff that you mentioned that I thought was very, uh, very, you know, insight looking at going forward is the election could have a bearing on the structure of the FOMC four months from today where the yeah. QE3 program is supposed to last at least five to eight months. So yeah. that could be something that we should talk about down the road, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, nothing. I mean, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I don't think anything's going to come out of this Fed tomorrow. Uh, pretty much standard, hold the line, uh, you know, business as usual until after the election. I think that's when you'll maybe see some fireworks because we also have the, uh, you know, tax Mageddon or whatever they're calling it, the fiscal cliff coming up here at the end of the year. So uh, it's going to be, well, there's definitely going to be some action probably coming from Washington, hopefully. Uh, you know, we don't, we go over that fiscal cliff and we don't see taxes increase. But uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, GDP, quarter three, uh, you know, I don't think it, it sets the world on fire. I don't see anything above two. Um, you know, if anything, I'm probably looking maybe for it to come out in range, maybe around 1.5, 1.7, 1.9, just because looking at what some of the earnings have been coming out like. So, you know, we do have some earnings coming out today. So what are your thoughts on the uh, GDP number? Uh, you know, I think we fall probably in line to start off with, but I'm a lot like Jeff. You know, I look at these GDP numbers. They're a lagging indicator. They kind of tell us what's happened in the past, and they're yeah. famous for, for a lot of revisions. I think what's probably more important to me is to listen to the tone of some of these executives in terms of their earnings, uh, earnings calls and what they see. Uh, they're the feet on the ground. They see what's happening. It doesn't sound good. It sounds very uncertain. It, it does. Sounds it very, does. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of worry about what's going to happen post-election. And the business environment in general, we see a lot of people pulling back, and so I'm more encouraged to kind of watch the forecast of where we may be in the business cycle, where we may where we may see fourth quarter GDP, really, rather than spending time studying the Q3 GDP yeah. as a lagging indicator. And right now, it feels very weak for the fourth quarter. So I think you do have to be cautious. Yeah. Um, you have to be very cautious. The fourth quarter, the economy, it's a ship sailing right now. I know a lot of unknown territory with the election and also with, you know, what's going to come up at the end of the year here uh, with this fiscal cliff. So you're right. I mean, there is a lot of uneasiness out there. We're seeing it across the board in stocks and commodities. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting fourth quarter this year and going to be an interesting uh, next couple of weeks here. Uh, get this election over with and let's get back to some business here. Um, remember, traders, trading is not suitable for all investors and does pose significant risk. If you have any questions and you'd like to contact us or talk a little more about what we spoke about today, uh, please feel free to contact any of us, Jeff Friedman, Kevin Craney, or myself, Bob Habercorn. Remember to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And uh, good luck tomorrow, good luck this week, and uh, let's make it through this election, and uh, we'll see how this thing pans out here.